Um, welcome to the presentation of actually two, two lectures. Today we have joined two lectures by George Balmasvich and Maxim Mars into one event. And there is another one going on up, up there. It's called Feminization of Politics and Activism. So if someone wanted to go to the other one, it's upstairs. Um, first, let me just, uh, we will do it like that. Uh, Georgia will be, uh, will have his lecture first, and then you will have some time for any additional questions. Then we will give a word to Bernard, who will um, introduce Marcel Mars, and then we will uh, go on with Marcel. Uh, so, uh, Georgia is uh, an artist that I know for a very long time. He uh, now lives in Ljubljana, but he was living in Belgrade uh, recently still. Uh, he is a graphic designer, but also an artist uh, who is um, uh, very active in the region, but also exhibiting and working uh, around the world, among which also Venice Biennale and also Mladi Levy Festival twice. So uh, we know him for a long time. Uh, he is now going to speak about a collective card, which he and his colleague um, I Dragan Protic, Dragan Protic, Dragan Protic uh, established in 1990. Uh, and uh, about collective card, there is a lot to be said. But since you are going to uh, present it, I will just give the word to you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, just to ask, do you hear me well? Can I speak now? So, Sorry? When no one moves at all. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I'll try to speak loud. We need about 123 images, which seems quite a lot. But we will go like 10 images per minute, approximately, so it will be about 12 minutes. Time in some images will stop because I have to explain about the dynamic of collective work, working group, which is the topic of this uh, presentation. And I also would like to show you what we uh, done until now to have a better impression of what they're doing. So I hope that you will understand. If not, please stop me at any time and ask uh, whatever you ask. Sometimes I will go through the images quite fast. Don't allow you to read everything because there are some poetry and things like this. We don't have enough time to read all the points and stuff like that. Just to have an impression what what it is about and what we uh, are doing. So that was an image from our former studio, which we lost, uh, and this is Schkart written on uh, Cyrillic servo creation methods. We have very few uh, uh, retrospective exhibitions. That's the, the, the last one, one, the first one, the one of the last. Uh, just to, to show you the, the amount of materials we were producing in the 90s and uh, 2000s. And now we are coming to the beginning. That's a context, 90s. Belgrade, Serbia, Yugoslavia involved in war, Serbia most responsible, and that was reality uh, on the on streets. Sanctions, uh, austerity, and so on. I don't want to complain, laying in front of the banks. And that's, that's our response to that situation. Serbia involved in war, uh, which break up Yugoslavia, a lot of blood. We produced the poems on cardboards related to the topics to the, to the reality at the time. There are 23 poems in total, uh, 10 of them translated to English, which I'm showing you the English one now in order to understand. This is how it looks like on the bunch of, of uh, when, when you collect them all. So what we are doing with this? We are producing that by our own money. We are graphic designers, making the craftsmen, and uh, collecting money on the side. I had a politics at the time of when we do the job, 100%, like, I was a little, little bit rough and tough <laughs> towards my colleague, Dragan Protic, asking to do 40 to 50% to put in the, in, in the, in the spare case. <laughs> The rest divide for our daily uh, routine, like life, paying apartments, and so on. It's quite tough 
uh, tax politics. But uh, helpful that we, we were able to produce this uh, uh, stuff on the side. And after producing these things, we were going on the streets and giving it to the people for free. Trying somehow to communicate with people. Unknown people just going to the street, creating the topics that was the uh, sadness of potential uh, customers. We were delivering in front of the, the shops and uh, magazines, sadness of potential travelers, nobody was traveling, little few on the railway station, sadness of potential vegetables on the brick market. Sadness of potential Peter Pan in the, in the playground, uh, the children. And that was still our reality, the cube of vouchers. The, the proper word is we call cube of vouchers for bread. It was delivered in 93 because Serbia was under the sanction and uh, people were getting vouchers to buy bread, vouchers for uh, oil, for uh, powder, washing powder, and for the gasoline. This is the later voucher from 1999. But I, I bought these vouchers uh, as, a, as a presentation of the context. So the next uh, thing we were delivering, we are very slow. We don't do much things. The sadness, the those targets you have seen, they were produced 92, 93. In two years' time, as much money as we, we got, we were investing in that. That was uh, 1997, we started producing vouchers. But not vouchers for material stuff, but vouchers for the uh, human feeling, so, so called. Mm -hmm. Trying the same, the, to communicate with people, giving them on the street, and uh, like that, trying to communicate. So the, the, that is the very first voucher, because what we are doing that we did design for the festival dedicated to Wilhelm Wright, psychoanalyst, American psychoanalyst. They asked us to produce something, and we produced uh, vouchers for orgasm because we had a theory about that. So after producing that one, we started to produce uh, others uh, as our own project. But that was the very first one, and most popular, I have to say. <laughs> vouchers for miracles, for relaxation. For happiness, I think that was the last one of the last. For fear, you, you can't see well, I, I think, because it's too much light, but that's important. Against. So, uh, with these few images, I want just to illustrate the ten years, the decade we, we, we spent. That was the case, as many artists do, trying to approach the audience desperately or less desperately, whatever. So that was our way. Go on the street, because from the very beginning, we decided not to go to galleries. Why? Because we were students of architecture. And we knew from the beginning that to be uh, in the gallery space, in the artist, you have to know some curator, you have to know someone to, to somehow preach. So we are fed up with that since we started architecture, urbanism, department of urbanism. We said from the very beginning that, that all city is our exhibition space, so we will use the streets for uh, to exhibit to give away our work. And this, these images are just explaining how we were trying to, to reach people, and it was in many occasions, which was very frustrating for me, not for Dragan, who is much more communicative, uh, there's a lot of frustration about it. That's a work in 1999, we produced in collaboration with Peter De Bruyne, Photograph from Brussels who asked us to, to make something to mark the dog sheets of the streets of Brussels because he was annoyed by the, the, the by this. We produced the, 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 the stickers which related somehow to dog sheets but also for the responsibility of doing things. And later on the posters, little posters. Just to, 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 to mention this one practical thing. If you make a big poster, it's a visible but it's hard to glue. You can have much space on the walls, but if you make a small one like we did, it's easy to, to glue whatever you like. <coughs> and that was how it was looking on the, on the Belgrade streets. Belgrade streets and Brussels streets. So the difference is just in color. <laughs> <laughs> and now about group work. Group work, as you know, it's not easy things to do. A lot of difficulties inside. Both we are very different personalities, Raga and myself. He usually makes cows in the studio, I'm trying to be clean, and you have to find some kind of the tolerance and the middle way. It's all the time the arguing, 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 arguing. But fortunately, none of us has a big ego, and fortunately, 
uh, at very early stage of our work, we came to the some kind of uh, decision only, our law. When we argue about something, uh, we never allow ourselves to be stuck with uh, some uh, critique. So if I critique his idea, he's usually telling me, okay, you don't have anything better. If I don't have anything better, we go with his idea. So that, that was the way how we're always going on, somehow, producing stuff. Which was first 10 years, a young artist thinking that producing is the, the very important, so on, producing material stuff, very important, that, that was reasonable. But later on, it's, we realized, as I've been getting older, that producing the material, art, artifacts, is not really the, perhaps the most important thing. Maybe it's the, the more important to produce good relationship, like architecture of human relationship, as we uh, defined in some way. And just to explain you our, our very first experience, that's the discretion, Tamara uh, the, uh, does know that. Very first collective uh, uh, experience in the group, exhibiting in the collective exhibition, perhaps the, the, the shaped our way later on. We invited to Ljubljana 1994 with a group of Belgrade artists, full bus of Belgrade artists, why the, the Serbia was sort of isolated. So to, to present the Belgrade art to Ljubljana, we came there and bus of 50 people, musicians, so on, like 20, 30 artists rushed in the Schutz gallery, quite a little gallery like this space, divided into rooms. We entered the gallery and almost all artists from the, from the entrance, they came, spot the best wall, rush, put the rucksack and say, I'll exhibit here, I'll here, I'll here, I'll kill, in five minutes. So there was no discussion what's best, like, to, to, to decide where we go. Brought and myself, I remember very well, like today, yesterday was, we were staying, on, uh, looking what's going on. And they occupied the walls in five minutes. Then I went to the toilet and went back and said to Prota, maybe we can show our works in the toilet. Anybody would go there, anyway. <laughs> so we blew up also in the toilet wall, uh, doors. What happened a year ago, since I moved to Ljubljana, I went to Schutz again, went to the toilet. These posters are still on the wall, on the, on the, on the doors of the 25 years, and still now. It is very important to know how maybe that some rushing, and some dialogue is important. And uh, that was our first frustration of the, uh, facing the artistic ego uh, very early stage, and perhaps very uh, useful for us. And of course, that's how it's like you go in front, a lot of obstacles. Uh, suppressing each other, but somehow going on. And from 2000 years, this is a breaking year now for me. Why breaking? Because we are fed up at that time with many artists obviously exhibiting worldwide uh, related to the same problem. Problems of minorities, of um, whatever, <coughs> uh, making video works, uh, many things. But what we realized that the people they are dealing with, like uh, refugees, migrants, uh, Roma people, and so on, they appear in their artworks, videos. And after that, nothing was changing for these people, but changing a lot for the artists. They are, they are becoming more and more famous. Those people were still in problems with things like that. And then remember the, the talk in the studio with Dragan, telling, I don't want to work like that. If you work with some people, I want that we both benefit, all benefit from the together's work, not just we as an artist, which is very common in artistic work. Then in 2000, year 2000, we found two very important collectives for us. One is Women Embroidery Group. There were very, a lot of refugees in Serbia, single mothers coming from Bosnia, Kosovo, and Croatia, living with, uh, with the children, uh, having no jobs, and so on. Tell, thankfully to Women in Black, the association, the NGO is Serbia famous uh, for uh, activists, uh, anti-war protestants, uh, many things. There is not enough time now to tell about them. They are absolutely great. We collaborated them from the very beginning, 91, and we consider ourselves a member. Uh, they introduced us with the Single Mother Association in Belgrade. Then we went there proposing the workshop of embroideries, the very old techniques, sewing things, messages on the piece of canvas. Perhaps you have all in your country, right? 
These are usually very patriarchal messages, telling wife cook well to make your husband, uh, to please your husband, and so on. The, the use of that was in all time, 19th century, beginning of 20th century, to protect the wall against the oil drops when you cook. But after that, they were like uh, that stoves with uh, lid, which. Uh, <coughs> So it, it went out of the use, but messages stayed, uh, stayed the same. Uh, patriarchal, just repeating, repeating, repeating. What we wanted, we, we came to idea to offer these women to, to tell what they think about the society today, and their position for women. And the very first time, to, we came to the to idea to try to offer their work on the art market, which we were refusing. 10 years to be part of the art market because we're giving for free. But this time we said, like, let's try to, to use our position of uh, artists already known a bit in, in Serbia to help them to sell this and to make income for them. So we're, we're starting to organize a workshop and to sell them. This is a, the one of them, but you can't see because it's, it's the only dark, the one of the few dark. So they were producing things. We were uh, on exhibition. We were uh, invited. We, we were putting their work, trying to sell that and all the money giving to them, trying to make a kind of sec secondary economy for them. This one immigrant. Immigrant. I saw my dream is true only for the ID papers new. It's from a Latin lamp that spirit comes, but showing this, which is like fake thing. The one is particularly engaged to men in days. Uh, he, he was fired from the job and she, he, she was very, uh, very tough in, in the, her messages. While workers work, filthy rich enjoy the journey. <laughs> Our factory from churches, we can do work, not pray. That's a trigger if you don't see the, the, the bottom line. <laughs> We have printed the billboard lady by this face cream so you don't be shady. The translation of extremely good help with our friend Michel Milosevic, the taxi driver from London, a yeah. uh, friend of us who was reading the, the yellow papers like the sun, but uh, uh, having the, the best of the, the English slang, which is very helpful for this, uh, the, to, the, for the proper translation. Because it should be in rhyme, very short message in rhyme, two lines in rhyme and illustration. Up until recently, I was getting my way holding these placards is all I can do today. In original live video and some creation, so you'll uh, just to have an impression, Dosko Ramezvali referente, a sad nosim ove transparente. So the... Have a look at the hot coats made of worker skin who belong to the VIPC. So this is Lenka. That produces, she produces a lot, like uh, commenting almost every day politics. Mm. And this is Brigitta, produces a little bit less, but uh, she works a lot more meticulously and more precise in, 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 uh, in sewing. And uh, we tried another collective with ourselves, but it was unsuccessful. The male, male embroidery group. Trying to, uh, we were showing in public spaces in Serbia, which was uh, kind of uncomfortable. But uh, the, the men involved in the group, they were not really uh, uh, willing that to continue for a long period of time. So it, it was after some time it stopped. It's a Biennale, uh, Biennale of Art in Tirana, where we were invited to, to show embroideries. And I decided not to show them in the museum space because, uh, you know. People talk about that, all artists are engaged, they talk about the uh, political situation, and a few of them they knew where it's the museum, and I guess even less people from Tirana knew where it's the museum. And so I said, I don't want to go there, I want to show the, on, the, on the street with the people that from go pass by and you see now. This is our experience. This is Tirana. So I exhibited that in the main square and had a lot of interaction with uh, most of women, I'd say. So this is like in drawings what we are actually trying to do. To use our position, I would say artists they have a privileged position in a way. 
If nothing else, just simple example, when you apply for visa, you may go somewhere, in night we had to apply for visa everywhere, and when we're going traveling somewhere, you, you most of the cases you end up in Germany, and then going further, when you come to the to the custom, the police officer German asks you, what's your purpose to come here, what you're coming here, and if you say, I'm visiting relatives, so on, then a lot of questions. But if you say, I'm artist, artistic collaboration, you get the stamp immediately, no, uh, no other questions. So, and getting visa was much, much easier for us. So I can say artistic position is, is a privileged position. No? So we were using, trying to use the, the, the position we had, helping other people to uh, as much to join us in the boat, and as you see, as, as many of us in the boat, boat goes faster. <laughs> that's a, another collective which I'll spend a little more time to explain because that's, that's about the work, working in the group experience, which I all, all, almost did PhD. I'm joking, I did not, but uh, <laughs> for six years working with 50 young people, it's really uh, interesting experience. So we found quite an orchestra. By accident, they invited to, to have a presentation with this one, but we tried to escape it, afraid to be boring. Then we organized audition, having a friend on the radio station asking, "Can you announce audition?" He announced audition in his radio show, and next day, 50 young people came. We were afraid of that and said, "People, there is no audition. We are all accepted. We will not check your music talent. We are all accepted." And we start to sing. Of these 50 people, maybe one third were musically talented, two thirds not, like me, I'm the worst one. <coughs> but we started to sing. Of course, at the very beginning, when you call people to join, you have to lead somehow. So we proposed, from the beginning, to sing the two streams, two, two ways of repertoire. One is sing the social, songs from the socialist period of rebuilding, rebuilding country, because the year 2000, and we hoped that the year of changing that while the social song because uh, we wanted as well working with the 50 young people to to recall the memory of the period which was at that time uh, very uh, nobody was mentioned socialism it was kind of the black sheep how to say properly i don't know like um, at the time when the there is almost no socialist country anymore, and uh, socialists are blamed for everything wrong in society, which we do not agree, we do not agree, trying to, to preserve the good memory of, of good things from, from that period. We grew up, of course, it's not a perfect, but it had a lot of, lot of good things. And that was the, the one way, one, uh, one reason why we were singing that. The other were uh, songs from the poets from Yugoslavia, all parts of Yugoslavia including Slovenia, on Slovenia language, Croatia, Bosnia, Macedonia, Macedonia language, Montenegro, so all Yugoslav languages, trying to introduce to young people somehow the, the history or the, the past they did not experience as we experienced. And if nothing else, I have to say, like maybe made a lot of mistakes working in the choir, Many people were accusing, oh, that's really fancy or schmancy and so on, so on. We're working six years on that, and if nothing else, I always tell to, 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 to these people, from that choir, there were six marriages <laughs> and six children, <laughs> two divorces, but if nothing else, <laughs> that, that six these children is something. That's some achievement. A <laughs> lot of bands came out from that. Man, I, I can't come, but more than five, less than ten, let's say, bands, who still exist. A lot of friends, it, it became a community. And we were playing on the, on, mostly on the streets. Green market streets, refugee camps, wherever we can, of course, the concept as well. This, was, this one was particularly like fancy event, I to say, but the photo is quite nice. Uh, it's a uh, castle in front of the museum. We were invited and uh, uh, just to present how many we were in, in the time. Like these placards which you see up, these are the text of the songs we sing at the moment. That was introduced because we realized that some are quiet, singing, let's say, political songs. But since they are amateur, 
people cannot understand well what they see. And that's important to pass the message. And uh, we introduce some kind of subtitles, so we sing and show what we sing so people can read as well. So to be sure that the message was passed properly. That's the duty of any lecturer. If he wants to, to show, to pass the knowledge to the, to the audience, it has to do everything, uh, whatever he can, just to, to that knowledge to be passed properly as much as possible. This one beautiful song, which I hope you play on the end, is uh, from the Brilliant Country. Like, Our miracles is already happening. Transforming. The dream, uh, the, the dream will be like reality, and reality will be like, as a dream, something like that. So you can imagine what was the, the idealistic vision of, of uh, that poem. This is the CDP published. And this is another poem. 2006, we introduced self-management in our poem. And now, the explanation about the group work. Now a little bit less slides, just a little information, we will go on better. So working with 50 people, young people, a lot of egos. After a certain period, we realized that the choir, there were two groups. One group coming just to sing, silent, telling, we want just to sing. Another group who was critiquing from time to time, realized something that doesn't go well and so on. Friend of my brother, he likes more those who are silent and sing. I like those who critique. Always telling you, listen then, if they critique, they tell you something is wrong. It's like you feel the pain in the body. Pain tells you something. There's something not perfect in your body. And of course, this is also the, the clash between those who always critique, it's not really welcome to those that we want to see, we want to see. The other level in the choir was the song who were preparing the songs, conductor and orchestra. They felt a little bit more. Uh, above the others. And after five years, we realized that having the power in the choir, also uh, having the knowledge means having the power. So we, we faced in a few occasions that we arranged the concerts in, the, in the, some little towns in Serbia, but the conductor and orchestra were telling you, I cannot go, I'm, I'm, I'm ill, which was maybe true, maybe not. So 50 of us, we had to say, okay, we have to cancel that which was not really comfortable station. Then we decided from very beginning, I said, I was telling to Draga, I want these people to work ourselves alone. I don't want them to anymore to, to lead them, like because of very Serbian habit or Balkan <coughs> habit is like political parties. The one who found the party stay uh, as a chief until the very until the death. The same with the NGOs, the same with the many organizations. This is very uh, kind of distinction, which I'm very proud of. That choir exists still today uh, and very popular and working super well. And we are very good friends and they're inviting us to every concert and everything. And this is the, our greatest achievement if don't calculate the six children. <laughs> <laughs> that, that we made a formation which is still functional. So we introduced self-management, so-called, in 2006. Left the choir. And after, of those who already left, who were unsatisfied, those who were critiquing, <coughs> criticizing, we found another choir called Proba. The, the name of that was Horkesh Kart. The other was Proba, which was smaller, made of people who wanted to be more kind of social engaged, who were fed up of playing in the concert spaces, like pre-groups, they wanted to play more on the streets, like, like Draga and myself. No? And we are playing the street. And this is the invention from the next choir. On the end of working with the first choir, the, my idea was why choir should work like that very hierarchical structure. The one person who has the power and conducting them, another singing and playing. In other choir, we have the same situation almost. The one guy who is playing guitar, we were arranging concerts, he had Zen, he said, I cannot go. People were saying, we cannot go. Two times, three times it happened to us, and I said, it does not go, go like that. Ask uh, one other member, can you learn these songs to play on guitar? She was already a musician, she said, yes, I can in three days. 
she learned to play. We went to that concert. That guy finished his exam earlier and <laughs> rushed into the town to join us. Then I learned to play guitar. I said, all of you have to learn to play guitar to avoid the concentration of knowledge, which means concentration of power, which means you depend on song. My uh, proposition is that as many people more say, the have the most more, more knowledge, it will be much easier to work together and much comfortable, which became true in that very experience. In fact, in the architecture during the class with children, giving them something, singing together, that was the thing we came, singing a few songs and then giving them text and singing, learning to sing together. And this is another event, poetry events, now we are coming toward the end. Poetry events, we started in 2008, uh, making open call on poetry events in the Cinema Rex, calling everyone who writes a poetry to appear on the stage and to perform, called Pesnichenje, poetry. Many people were going. And this is the, another invention, I have to say, we sort of invented. Symbolic fee of one euro for event. This is, we, we performed it in schools, in their places, children, bands, everything. That was invention. We, we introduced one euro symbolic entrance. And tell you, each euro you give on the entrance will be spent publishing the book from the previous month festival. It was monthly, once a month. So people coming in October, for instance, giving one euro as a ticket for getting the book from September. 200 people come, 200 euros, printing 500 books is 100 euros, which means we were able to produce books. And so far, in five years of existing, we produced 56 books of the people who never had a book. And now we are coming to the very end, 2010, there was open call for Biennale of Architecture in Venice and Serbia Architecture Association, they make open call and we applied. The topic was people meet in architecture. <coughs> uh, we proposed a playground because playing together is kind of uh, respecting the other, otherwise there is no play. And we introduced that seesaws because if you want to probably play, you have somehow to have balance with, with uh, some person on the other side. So we won that competition in Serbia and we ended up in Venice Biennale producing that quite strange seesaws with the poetry of Vasco Popa on the wall. We use also his poem. He said, if I, uh, uh, my father was telling me uh, I would like to have a small tree to come along with me on the street. So we, it was very strange to walk with a tree and we produced some walking plants as well. And that was how pavilions look like. And they appeared to be super crowded over our expectations, uh, which caused also a lot of damages as this. So we are working, I always used to say, like a London tube, working during the day and repairing during the night. So it was almost quite successful. Later on, that, that thing went to the this in London and many other places, all that equipment, all the seesaws. And we use, of course, when we in London, we use the opportunity to go to the Abbey Road to <laughs> act as, as a business, like all the tourists in London do. <laughs> so, poetry, and we were in, also invited by Juncker in Ljubljana 2011, poetry on the streets again. Invited in Flint, Michigan, destroyed city, half of houses destroyed. We decided to write a poetry on that abandoned, destroyed houses. Which is the problem with local sites? Some people are stopping coming. Uh, do you have a permission to, to work, to, to, to write to that private property? And that was really uncomfortable a few times in, in, in Flint. Walls of uh, Faculty of Architecture, also poetry. And now we're coming to the very end, migrant stories. We ended up in 2013, before the migrant crisis, in the migrant camps, invited by Group 484 to do the uh, 
artistic workshop. We're, being, we're thinking what to do, what the hell do the bad people who came just to have a rest and continue to West Europe. It's senseless to what they did. They became there just asking them how you came. I was curious. They started to talk. I said, do you mind if I write? Why? Because Group 44, they work with the school kids around Serbia. We came to idea to use their stories to present to the school kids in Serbia, trying to avoid uh, forthcoming uh, xenophobia or racism might appear because a lot of people were passing by. So I was collecting stories, which appeared very touching. They tell you, there were no pathetic things. For me, they are super brave people trying to, to go to the better life and risking their lives, which I learned through the many interviews I did, and just to show how it looks like. Just to have an impression, they're telling me, like, I stayed there that much money. I, I, uh, I borrowed from friends, stayed there, blah, blah. Some people were traveling seven years at the moment we met. <laughs> and after we presented these maps, 2015, Museum African Art in Belgrade, for the very first time after, after that, it became very, sort of, how to say, maybe popular, or we're getting a lot of invitations to exhibit that on the art exhibitions worldwide. And at a certain point, I was fed up and I started to deny it. I said, these are not art objects. These are the school tools. They were made like the graph geographical maps in the same material. We want to, to work with the school kids, not to, to show them to the art audience. And giving conditions like, yes, we can send you maps if you organize something for <laughs> school kids and the revival and so on. And that's how it looks like. They're not really, my drawings are sometimes clumsy. I can draw much better, I have to say, but <laughs> these are like. But what's interesting, on this exhibition, I was getting a lot of emails from the people who visit the exhibition. <coughs> And I was very surprised that people are that much uh, impressed by that, by, by these maps. And I realized later on why, because these maps, they're telling the true stories. There are no imagination of People just telling, I was just writing, the simple documentary work. But is that true? And people reading that, they knew that that was the reality, not kind of imagination of some artists. And that's why it became popular, I guess. That's like one, two, three, like three times he tried to, to reach the, the island and from the third time he succeeded. And these are, of course, at first I tried to limit it, uh, put on the geographical map, but it's really complicated because people coming from Iran, Pakistan, Afghanistan, big countries, Sudan, then coming to the small space, the Greek, Macedonia, this little tiny space where a lot of things happened to them, so it was not possible to write that many stories in that little country on the map. And what has to be done? We are coming to the very end. Question from Oksana from a few days. I'll come back to, to this, like, like a football term, football, the most simple game. Like you have two teams, one team made of 11 beautiful, skilled, Players, they know, do everything with the ball. Whatever you imagine. But you see, 11 players, 11 balls. The another team, 11 players, they don't know much, modestly talented, but they just, just like they pass the ball to each other. And what do you think? Who will win? It's a, it's a little suggestion. Of <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> so that's. Be like all the time, with imagination, drag on myself. So we have to fight together to quote Darkus with beautiful sentence. If you do not fight collectively, you will lose the individual. And that's the end. Thank you very much.
with the words that they were writing on the embroidery? And what was the process for you to get them to express themselves? What was your input for them to do that? It's also a very good question. The very beginning was very fast. When we came to them, like, can you write, David, I'm not a draftsman, I'm not a poet, I don't know. But I would leave my daughter to draw something, something. They said, no, 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 it's not way. And, like, when you come to someone and say, I, I don't know to sing. Like me, I, I was the worst one. But it happened to a friend of mine who was the, the educator in music. She, she told me, like, only 1% of the population really has no uh, music talent. Only 1%. If you speak foreign language with not the, 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 the strongest accent, for example, it means that you, you feel something, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the best way to improve is just to play some music you like and try to sing along and you will realize when you are in tune <coughs> and time going. Passing, you will be more and more in tune. The same like this, we all, when we are children, kids, we all draw, we all sing, we all play, and then we go to school, it disappears in some time. Just not that the kids who decide to work them out. And then we get involved, we are shy to sing, if we are not drunk, shy to play, or and all this stuff. But it means that we still have some kind of, we all have possibility to do that. Then we came with a blank paper, they said, we, we know nothing. Then we came with our proposition, telling them what you think about it. They had opinion. If you have opinion, it means that you feel something. So you can also produce opinion. Then they were reducing our drawings and like that we involved them in their own creativity, helping them at the beginning of course to rhyme this because that's a skill as well. Dragon is perfect in that. Dragon is a poet. Then that's how it started. And that Lenka, she is naturally born a poet. She, when she be a project, she immediately started. But with others it was a kind of way. It's kind of uh, seducing people to, to relax. Like a friend of my musician was telling me, you have to relax yourself and try not to sing too loud. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that. I have, I have uh, also a question. At the beginning, uh, yep. you said two or three times, uh, fortunately, none of us had big ego. Yes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then you mentioned uh, what made us all love that most of the times the founder of an NGO dies as the manager of this NGO. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that, that, was, uh, that was Bogdan Danich. I read in some his but interview. He said it, it and I said, like, yeah, yeah. I was looking at the situation. It seems to be, yeah, that seems to be right. <laughs> but I think we all left because we all live this kind of thought or situation yeah. in, uh, in different ways. Then you showed us wonderful examples of teamwork, and, um, but all of them were not really with artists or professional in the, in the art team or in the cultural life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, you went, when you wanted to create collective work, you went to people who were the normal, not the art professionals. <laughs> it's good for the normal. <laughs> <laughs> So, yes, yes, yeah, that, that, that was our main intention. Careful to, to Dragon, a colleague of mine, who is, I have to say, he's a brilliant approaching unknown people. I'm very shy. I, I, for me, like, I to, but he is ready to jump on everyone to start the contact. And I learned yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And he, that was his basic idea, which frustrated me the first 10 years. Like, going, going to the street, you can imagine giving some artwork to someone. And, He's taking that in five meters, throwing it in the beam. But Dragon was uh, relentless in uh, And that was, that was uh, from now, I think, like that, that was really great from him. And of course, to approach these kind of people, not easy. You fail sometimes. It's a lot of failures as well. And, uh, yeah. But <laughs> I don't know, so continue. Dragon is very great in this. He fails a lot. He's not, I have. I need to, like, time to, to, to recover, but... <laughs> Did you want to ask something else? It was, Anna, it was, um, it, it was a conclusion that I wanted to, to check with you. Do you really believe that it's more open to be collective uh, with kids, 
somehow with people who want to work on the street, who want to communicate with people more than in the art professional sector in the sense that First we of all, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sure what you mean art professional. Because I, I don't consider my people as art professional. Like then uh, people who leave for art yeah, or something. Yeah. That have the privilege. From our experience, working with non-artists <coughs> appear to be much more fun. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of, lot of experience with artists and uh, awesome. collecting. It was in many times quite frustrating. Mm -hmm. We face a lot of egos. In the music world, there's also egos. Yep, and it's very hierarchical. The music world is sort of uh, everyone to fight to for exhibitions for spaces, music. That's why I'm really <coughs> I don't know. For instance, those maps they went in some exhibition in Newcastle, and the curator who was writing me it was about two months he was writing me, and I was I didn't want to send another exhibition. And I was refusing. And, uh, no new condition. You can't invite us there. And after two months, my wife Bohena. Who, who is creating said like, you see that he really wants you to, why don't we? <laughs> so I thought, we are not really, I don't know, working with the, with I don't know if you're familiar with the work of Nepaplier from Paris. If I have like some people I want to work with more or to proper, he's a French, Gerard Paris Clevel, brilliant, by my opinion, activist designer, so on. He, he, they, they had collective in this percent which uh, are made of team designers, designers, sociologists, philosophers, local people, who live. So people from, from the local, maybe none of them artists, and they work still. From the very beginning for us, it was like, wow, that's, that's a nice collection. And you have to you learn a lot from people who are not from that field. What are the names of collection? Yeah. collection? That one? Yeah. Uh, Nepaplier. Uh, Igor, no, 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 no. Is it good pronunciation? Not for. Not for. Not for. Not for. It's Clavel. 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 Not for. Gerard Paris. Ah, Clavel. Yeah, I don't know. It's no, but that's someone's palette. He was. He was the founder of Atelier Populaire in 1968. Do not fall. We met him in 1999 in Paris. In the studio, I'm very impressed by it. Working with everyone. So, you, you are not a musician yourself, and obviously you don't do a means of collecting the Rotary, but what was... I tried to do that. But I mean, what was like the trigger for each pro project or trigger why this time we will work on the choir and or, uh, orchestra? Because in the beginning it was clear where uh -huh. all these posters come from and obviously you're uh -huh. the south side. Okay. Yeah. Embroidery, because that's the first. And the choir. Dragon had a collection of old embroideries. And we all studio which was full of messy, a lot of heat hanged them on the wall, like, like images on the wall. We were looking at them for years. <laughs> and we were all, 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 the, all the same message, the famous core, it's a money's body that the Ruchat has got it. That's the most famous one. And we were asking ourselves, <coughs> looking at them every day, like, why it should be like that <laughs> all the time? So that's why I go, why not? Let's, let's try to make a new one. Then it's how it started. The choir started particularly. We invited to present our work like this one. We say, oh no, we, we're very shy at the very beginning. The, the, the presenting things like I'm doing now, it takes for, for me like decades, literally. So it, you learn it somehow. Then we try to escape it. We said, let's make a pre read buff, how to say, performance happening instead of presentation, where people will sing, because you know, it's much easier, faster, amusing for the audience. Then we made audition. Yeah. And they, they were all accepted, huh? Oh, oh, yeah. I remember the one girl calling us the day before and like, what kind of music are you going to perform? Is it, will it be classical music in 20th century, 19th century, or more kind of that? And we were like, uh, uh, no, no, we are more for the contemporary. <laughs> you know, I, uh, yeah. So 
there, there was really kind of th that going blind into the, uh, into the obstacle, but when they came, they were like you now, maybe a little bit more than 50. We were very afraid, I would say, and I said, Dragon, can you tell them something I'm afraid? And Dragon said, like, <laughs> what we said, you are all accepted. And I guess they were confused. But that, after the first presentation, what was interesting, it was in Sezaka, Belgrade. We had that presentation, they announced it, and the space was filled like this. Mm -hmm. we, we finished in 20 minutes, went out, and out was even more people waiting. So people were asking, can you repeat it one more time for the others from outside? Then we repeat it. Then we finish, and member, choir member came to us after that, said like, listen people, we want to continue working with you, is it possible? <laughs> we want to propose you as well. That's how The very important thing, which I did not mention, is working discipline. That's Dragon myself also. Huge argue about that. <laughs> because I think if you work with the choir, you have to set up the time in the week. Every Tuesday, 8 p.m., for instance. Thursday, so people have, must know the time they come and to prepare the rehearsal. If you tell them, now next week we'll call you, tell you, blah, 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 when it goes like this, it's, it's very, very hard. So it must be some time, because I believe in that, I believe in work. I, people tell that I'm very talented craftsman. It is true, I have to say, not modestly, that I can draw whatever I see. But I'm not talented. My parents were telling me when I was a kid that I was drawing five days, five, five hours a day minimum before going to the primary school. Nobody was forcing me. And I was thinking, if I would play guitar five hours a day, I would play perhaps very well, right? <laughs> the children. So I really believe in work. I'm not talented that I, that what I draw is like because I was working endlessly when I was a little child. So it's like yeah. uh -huh. one more and then we will give the word to myself. Yeah. At the same time could you please pass the previous slide just to see the name of the person? Just the previous one. Darko Suvi. Darko? Darko Suvi. Suvi. Darko Suvi. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> just to check him out. Yeah. 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 Thank you. So you had one last question. Yeah, um, I was curious about uh, self-organization. Uh -huh. uh, uh, I am part of a collective that organizes like that for several years. Brilliant. Um, and one of the difficulties we found, and I wanted to ask you in this sense, how was it for you, is to balance this, um, the fact that we do not live in a, a whole society that is like this and we make actually a little island of self-organization, of uh, mutual uh, and non-hierarchical uh, relationship that is really good. But how, how did, this gr did your group balance the fact that you go in a society that has almost nothing to do with that kind of model, a society where at work you have a boss, where you have, so, and if you had any kind of difficulties with the relationship in this sense. Brilliant question. I, I was planning to make three videos to show you, which are not because they're not long, short, but that's, that was the 2006 we were invited in Guangzhou Biennale to make a choir. Mm -hmm. Curators who saw that, what we did. They invited one month uh, ahead mm -hmm. just to have time to make a choir in Guangzhou. And that's the situation. We came in completely other context where people who have a free time are pensioners mm -hmm. or kids before the or primary students school. Or, yeah. It was open edition and appeared kids up to five years and people uh, more than 70. Everyone else were busy working or going to school. It's a really <coughs> quite different. A lot of people hanging out, having got a free time. So it's not possible, I believe, like that invite someone from Europe to make the same situation in a completely different context. I think the people, for instance, from Korea, that was, that was a great failure, I have to say. Mm -hmm. We are fighting for months. That's a vi we made a video about our failure, telling like, sorry people. And they forced <laughs> some school kids to sing, mm -hmm. but uh, it was, it, it did work. So I think the, the, that's my opinion to each context. Working in the context is very important for the conditions. So something working in Serbia cannot work in Germany, I guess. Maybe we can use some 
similarities in some tools, but it might appear that it will not be the same result. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Thank Continue with the presentation of Marcel, Marcel Marx. Uh, I don't know Marcel Marx for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so I will make it short and we just met yesterday in the open session discussion. And I'm sure you have read the description, so you have read like me that Marcel is an advanced internet user and founder of the Multimedia Institute in Zagreb and a research fellow uh, at the Coventry University. And you have read also about the library project, Memory of the World. But maybe I, I can just give you some keywords that maybe, what to me, describes better the universe of Marcel that I remind from our discussion yesterday, uh, which are hacking the system, uh, struggle, and solidarity. So maybe that just give us <laughs> A short in introduction and another thing, uh, because we see advanced internet user, but I remember as well as that Marcel describes himself as a worker. So, Marcel. Um, thank you. Uh, yeah, let me just show you first uh, what is Memory of the World today. So, uh, this, if you go to library.memory of the World, you can just like type what I will type, or you can just type what you you would like to see there. So the authors, you could see the <coughs> Sully, for example, if you're interested, a couple of books. Uh, Igor Stix, who told me that he really likes that, her, that his books are here. Um, then, um, I don't know, maybe some, um, um, like in titles, there are like 95 books, which has, uh, solidarity in a cycle. These are another kind of keywords which I like. So they're like 203 communism. <laughs> uh, most of them are not anti communist. I said, yes, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah, I will talk louder and I don't think that you missed much if you were uh, looking into the screen. I was pretty much saying what I'm typing. So, yeah. I will now be like louder. So this is a tag, uh, this is the one um, which I tagged, I know that because that's like uh, 19 books, important books which are for my, uh, for my uh, PhD. Um, another one like just library, uh, that would be kind of a meta thing here. So the books about the libraries on the online library. So this is Memory of the World. Uh, for example, if you are interested in all of these uh, 803, then if you like download this file or this file, and if, if you are familiar with the command line, then you can run this like a little line in command line. Uh, and then uh, if you install ARIA to C and then do this file, then on your local computer you will get all of the 803 uh, books and it will be ready to be browsed, like searched. So you will pretty much get the same thing like what you can see here. Uh, you can put it on USB, you can upload it somewhere else, uh, you can give it to someone, or you can just keep it on your local hard disk and then use it. You can also uh, uh, import it in a, in a free software uh, called Calibre, which is the book management uh, software. Maybe a few of you have it installed because it's mostly used for conversion. So when you have like one format and then you need it for your e-reader like Amazon Kindle or something like that, then you would use that software. But that software is also very good uh, to help you make uh, your books list or books kind of like a, a folder into a catalog. So I'll tell you a little bit more about how we articulate uh, what memory of the world is. So for, let's say, around like maybe 50,000 people per month, this is how they approach it. They don't care, I, I think that few of them care about what is behind, what is in the background, what is the story about it, and they kind of enjoy uh, that it's a whatever, that they can go and download their books. And a lot of people, 
come back to us, ask us for the new books. So, like, can you like uh, yeah. give just like in any library? I have like at least 20 people uh, who are researchers, and usually to Facebook they just say, "Hey, I, I couldn't find the book. Can you like find it for me?" And then there is like a, a little bit kind of um, <clears throat> a little bit of a, um, a context of taken for granted. What they ask me and other librarians, so they're like, I, I'll just start to kind of unfold what is the concept behind. So these are the librarians. Th these are all, not all uh, like, like fully, they're like a la little bit less of real people because few people would have more than one librarian persona. And that's what we can exercise on the internet. No? But none of the books on this website is ever uploaded with any script. There is always a person who picked up a book where it is available, and then it takes care of putting it in the catalog. So it does like what librarians do, you know? like you kind of like do the, a little bit of a librarianship inventory. So that's how, how it gets here. And this is a number of uh, uh, like, let's say like around like 20 people, uh, but then, as in every kind of uh, loose community, there is maybe like six which are very, very active, and then the rest is like occasionally doing that. Uh, and then out of six, there is uh, there are like two uh, who are like running two thirds of that. So it's 150,000 books at the moment, a little bit more. And then two librarians are like uh, responsible for like. 50 plus 50,000. They also have a little bit of a competition who has better books, things like that. That, that happens, no? Uh, but there is no, like, uh, there is no bad blood. There is no, like, hard, hard feelings in, in, in that sense. So when people ask us to bring the book, there is something which is taken for granted. That some people, but not us, will call that stealing. So that book is not available, uh, or it is available if you pay for that, or if you borrow it from like a public library somewhere, a university library. And then we have a network you can't see of shadow librarians. And then we go to the places, uh, you can easily get there. It's not nothing like, ooh. Uh, but we get there and then we, what we call, liberate the book. So the book which once was after the paywall, so you could only like pay for that, or borrow it from the library, then whatever. Uh, uh, by the work, by the labor of uh, librarians, gets uh, uh, offered to you. <coughs> so I'll just tell you a little bit of a history how how we got there. Um, so uh, in like a, uh, 2012, uh, we were um, let me just um, yeah, I'll just open. Uh, we were. We were invited to uh, curate um, a new media festival in Ljubljana called Hype. So there was like six, I think, in a row. Uh, so they wanted like, as you do with the new media festivals, you have a curator, that curator comes with a smart concept, and then that curator usually needs to go and like say, hey, my great friend and uh, artist, can you do something? I came up with this concept, can you do something for that? And that's why they also invite you, because when you're a curator, it's not just that you have to come up with a concept, you also need to be part of that network. You know? And at the time, I was not anymore part of that network. I kind of lost a little bit of uh, interest of what's going on in art, in new media art. Uh, so instead, I, 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 I proposed to do the, a public library. So I said, like, let's kind of, let's try with this. Let's try to claim that this time of three days and space will be our public library. And they were like, okay, what, what, what do you mean by that? So in, what, what was like very important was for me to convince them, but then all of us to convince the world that that's what we are doing. You know? like, so we had a couple of months to make a public library. Uh, so uh, at the time, uh, there, was like, um, there was a project called Library Genesis, which is still, uh, which is still going on. This is the... Uh, let's say like um, ex-communist librarians, because if I say Russian hackers, then, uh, uh, 
then it completely changes the uh, context. Oh no, it's yeah. here you can just type Legion. Ah, it's what? Here uh, you type Legion and the first thing is words. Okay, Legion Arc. Okay, there are like many mirrors. Let me yes. just tell you, it doesn't matter. This is like the biggest uh, the, the website uh, where you can find like around like 2 million books, uh, mostly English. Some uh, like the second language is um, is Russian by by the number of titles. The third one uh, is German, and then only after that Spanish, which is kind of like they're like weird kind of a list of like uh, uh, how many books in which language is uh, is there, and they're kind of like you can you can take your own interpretation. Anyway, at the time in 2012, uh, Library Genesis was just like a few months. Uh, uh, known to be the website where you go for the books. Uh, because in the beginning of 2012, uh, another website, which was called Gigapedia, or before that eBooks Club, was shut down through the court case. So most of the attempts, as you know, like with movies, with music, and whatever, most of the attempts live for a certain period of time, and then they get shut down through the legal pressure and things like that. Uh, so what Library Genesis did was the first time that, uh, that they offered everything they have, like the whole catalog, database, if you are te te technologist, that's what you need in order to run exactly the same kind of infrastructure. So they offered that to anyone to just like do that. So they were not trying to cover their costs uh, by keeping that for them for themselves and like trying to get the money from usually casino and porn. So in a way, when you go for the books in like 2012, even today, you kind of feel that it's that the books are something in between casino and porn, which kind of is not really what you would expect. Anyway, so that was our, so to go back to convincing moment, that was our convincing moment in 2012. So we, for months before, we downloaded all of that from Library Genesis and we, we, we were saying to people in Ljubljana, here we have a million books. At the time it was a million books. And it was like um, 11, 11 terabytes. Now it's more. Huh? So if you ever like USB this, it's kind of even if you are not dealing with big data, you don't even know how much of data is that, 11 terabytes. No? But it doesn't matter. For us, it took like a few months to download it and to prepare it. And then we did a number of other things. We had a program there. And for us, the program, what was the important part was to actually raise the issues, why, why we were doing that. Because we were not just doing that to show that it's possible technically, we were not doing that for, for any other reason but political. But at the same time, for, for us, uh, politics are done in a tactical way. So these days, what we feel and what kind of proved is that some of the politics, you can only start from culture and art institutions. So other institutions are not keen to listen to you. They don't care uh, what you can offer. They just, yeah, they, they, don't, they don't care or it goes completely against their vision of the world. You know? So in, in that sense, that's how we, how we started to articulate. And um, uh, I will just tell you, together with that convincing moment of having a million books just like nearby you in a few, in few, um, few meters from you, uh, from, yeah, from you there, we also offered kind of um, a proposal and what do we think what is a public library. So a public library is free access to books for every member of society. It's a library catalog and a librarian. And then these two sentences, which I will just read you, that got like quoted everywhere, but usually without the first part, which we can discuss later. But people really kind of subscribe to that. So it says, with books ready to be shared, meticulously cataloged, everyone is a librarian. When everyone is librarian, library is everywhere. So in that sense, there's kind of like a, a vision and feeling where many people could subscribe that with digital technologies, with digital networks, that's kind of possible. It's not really, this is the part which you don't need to say much. No? It's like, that's internet. My father, I, t I showed him um, like a street view, no? Google Street View. When you get, it was like early days of Street View. I was never in Rotterdam and I was trying to show him 
like, hey, I'm going to Rotterdam. He used to work in Rotterdam. Let me show you that. And he was not impressed at, at all. He was like, mm -hmm. like, this is the only, we don't have flying cars. There is no like future which was promised. Oh, there is only Google Street View. It's kind of <laughs> underwhelming, but still, I'm impressed. No, like just like, and he's, <laughs> everything is on internet. He's not on internet, but he knows that everything is on internet. He's also into TV shows and then, you know, like all of these CSIs and whatever, they go through the satellite and then in whatever the, the, the little drop of water, you have a reflection of a killer, you know, and then they solve the, the, the whatever, the plot. So in that sense, it's, for my father at least, this is not something which I have, like, of course, everything is on internet. And we are playing a lot with that idea that there are things which are now uh, possible, which were not possible any time before. And then that's one kind of layer of that. Uh, and then there are like competing ideological visions where there are also some other people who think that internet is super new thing and that internet actually is revolutionizing the world. I'll just give you one example and then I will try to keep these kind of uh, um, let's say, idea, idealized versions of what the internet could, could do. So, another kind of very strong one is that um, that internet is the abstraction or, and also implementation, the real world abstract device, which is information processing, processing engine, which can at any given time give you what is available, what is the price of what is available and then ideally everyone is doing that so then the, the demand and the whole kind of trade, trading problem is in a way resolved because there is nothing in the world which is smarter than that engine that that free market where you which is totally transparent to you and which can solve all of the problems no and we don't subscribe to that so we have a different branch of that. We think that that's horrible, that that has horrible consequences for the world, and that's uh, um, uh, Mirovsky is like calling, that would, I kind of like quoted Mirovsky of what neoliberal, neoliberalism is, no? So neoliberal kind of fantasy is what I just told you, that market is the information processing engine which can provide to the world the best source of any information, which then will solve the problem of allocation of resources. So the only thing which we have to do with the world is to make that world into the uh, like world of objects, which are measurable, which are possibly digitized, and then which has a label price, which is usually dynamic, just like the, the plane tickets, no? The, the beginning is like very cheap, and then as you get, if you are slow in processing the information, everything will be um, more expensive for you. So that's kind of, that's where, wherever it goes. So in that sense, that's what neoliberalism is. And in that sense, it's not necessarily that it only came into the world because uh, sometime in the 80s, after the oil crisis in the 70s, Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan were like, oh, we don't believe in society. It could be also that it came because the, the nucleus of that idea is the nucleus of the idea where the capitalism has the means to actually explain the world in a such a way that nothing else can explain the world. So what we are trying to do is to explain the world in a little bit different in, from, the, uh, from a different angle, and we, we picked up a public library in that sense, as our uh, narration device. So we would like to offer something where uh, the good things are possible, that the society we believe uh, it could exist, uh, could actually use some of these devices. At the same time, even this is very precise, it's computers, networks, and whatever, we don't believe in a society which is resolvable. We don't believe that, that society is something which we can explain, which we can kind of logically uh, get to the whatever conclusion. We believe that it's messy, it's full of conflicts, uh, it's never kind of stable, it's dirty, uh, uh, but at the same time, there is kind of idea that that could all work fine, 
And the keywords which you said at the beginning, like solidarity, for example, is something which, uh, which we will do. So free access to books for every member of society comes <clears throat> from um, after the, the French Revolution, in a way, so what we also subscribe to is the, 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 the kind of the, the, the proposals which are moving the world into a better place. And usually that's not something which makes it forever. So the, the step which was made by um, um, Haiti Revolution, French Revolution, American uh, uh, bourgeois revolution was that uh, there are like some that sense bourgeois, which want to get in charge, no? And in order to convince the world, just the same way how we were trying to convince the world about why we can call that space public library, they also came up with some ideas or idealizations. And that idealization was saying all people are equal. So we shouldn't discriminate people. But, of course, the people who were doing that didn't see that they're women, didn't see that there are people, workers, who don't own anything, who don't possess anything. They didn't see race. They didn't see so many people around, by, but, all, but at the same time claiming, because what they could see is that I'm in charge, and these kings, we should get rid of them. No? And they, they, get, they got rid of few, not enough, I would say. We still have like kings and, and queens which should be symbolically hanged, or if not, then, I don't know, maybe uh, literally. That's <laughs> the idea, you know, like, uh, that's where, because we cannot stand with that. It's just like, it's 2019, and French Revolution brought it. So what, what people then could do is that they can subscribe to some aspects of that, they could reflect critically <laughs> on these ideas, and then they can make it their own struggle. So in that sense, uh, there, is, there is a legacy of that. And one of the legacies is uh, what they also proposed with the public library. So the bourgeois was not really ready to do the, the problem of the distribution of wealth, of, the, of uh, how, how do you make world uh, fair. Uh, every word is in a way wrong, so like, please stay with me, it's wrong, but yeah, maybe we can discuss that uh, further. Uh, so, so, so they were not able to address that. The communists were the ones who were addressing that later on, criticizing how the bourgeois was not able to address that problem. But bourgeois then would say like, yeah, but at least everyone should have access to education. Everyone should be, in that sense, trained to become a good citizen and things like that. And they very, very early realized that the public library, that the market in that sense, that the whatever the stage of that time of capitalism couldn't provide that. So that we need to build the institutions who would uh, uh, protect the vision and the claim which, which they made. And in that sense, that's the public library. So public library of the 19th century were wrong in so many real places because at the time people who were able to build these libraries were not able to recognize who are the old people. We will never be able to do that, but that's a process, and we can kind of ref uh, uh, reflect on that. But then during that time, public library was used by many who were not included, and then they would just build that and use it as a tactical device to actually go further to, to, to change the world. And that's the way how we over-identify with, uh, uh, with, uh, with this world. Let me see what's the time. Um, yeah, but okay. So that's the free access to books for every member of society. So, in many ways, uh, in many ways, internet was kind of like a big change. No? So, in many ways, the idea that that is possible that that a massive more people will be able to access information, to access education. Uh, that it, it is possible. And it was not only seen by the leftists. No? There were like at least a couple of scenes uh, uh, in, like in the, the, the more developed parts of the world who had access in the 90s to the internet. And they all kind of believe that that's like a revolutionizing force, not the revolution as in the French Revolution or October Revolution, but just something which is changing the world in such a drastic way 
that that's, that's possible. But what we can see is that gradually we would get technically more and more, like closer and closer to, to, to get there, but at the same time in parallel, legal and other regulations, the way, the dynamics of the market and all of that, it's not that they move, they, they absolutely moved in a worse than it was like at the beginning of the 90s, that they also like have a trend to actually make it even worse. So at the beginning, the capitalism, let's say the neoliberals who, would, who believe that everything <coughs> in the world should become a product, which can be then the digital object, which can be put into the a database where people will query if they need it, and then the price will be made after all of this information. So uh, it's not just that, but the, the world in that sense goes into rentier, into the worst of the capitalism. The product is very bad, but there is like there is even worse than that, and that's the rent. No. So in UK, the aristocracy, queen and whatever, they own the land. You know? like, so whatever you do up on, on, on that, it's still under their control. And then if they are not happy because we didn't kill them, like back then, I mean, they didn't have like the, the proper bourgeois revolution. But you know what, what I'm trying to say? It's, it's in, they are in charge to regulate that. So the, whoever is in charge today, they, what they do is that they try to get rid of the product and make everything into stream. So, so in that sense, that's, that's what you then pay. It's like water. You know? like, so they try to make everything. We, we will always, with technology, we will use metaphors because that's something which is impossible to describe in any other way. Because there is too much you should know as a like, technologist in order to go with the very precise. So let me just try to say, Imagine it's the same, like someone is telling you that bottles of water, which are super bad, no? like it's like a plastic, like water should be free, why do we buy, you know, like, you know it's like a hipster topic, no? so you don't have to be leftist to know that. So just imagine that it's not anymore about the bottles, plastic bottles, but it's actually the water pipe, and they want to own that, they want to own the water, they want to own the gas, they want to own the electricity. So in that sense, that's the dynamic. And when it comes to books, that's exactly also what happened. So with uh, Amazon, who's mostly in charge, who is the enemy of authors, publishers, and all of us, uh, they made it very early into a stream. So just one anecdote from Amazon Kindle. You know 1984, no? As like a brother, so uh, they made it part of the of the free books on Amazon Kindle. Huh? So like, please buy this streaming platform, and you can start by reading 1984, which is kind of tricky. Also, like I I, I cannot imagine whose who, whose idea was it. like. Well, I have a great idea. I'm like a marketing department. Let's start with 1984. No? So what happened is that they didn't clear the rights for that with the publishers who had the rights. So everyone who bought Amazon Kindle with 1984 just woke up with their device without that book. So just imagine, you got a book, just imagine the world without digital. You bought a book, 1984, you put it on a bookshelf, you wake up, you go to see your bookshelf, you're like, okay, I feel... I feel okay today, I feel like optimistic enough, so I want to read 1984. And then you get to the bookshelf, there is no book. Your book is owned by Amazon, uh, your bookshelf is owned by Amazon, and they can de decide to do whatever they want. So even if you do a mistake by, I don't know, cheating on the PA system, so you have a birthday, you buy it from Amazon, and then you say, I don't like it. And then you can bring it, that's like we have like customer rights, no? So sometimes it works, but if they catch you, if they think that you cheated on that, they can just say like, okay, no more. So it's not just that you cannot buy anymore the PA system, the speakers for your birthday can <coughs> cheat on that, and do the party and like whatever. They will actually withdraw all of the books you have on Amazon Kindle because they will just like uh, cut you from Amazon. No? So this is the world. So that's what I'm trying to kind of bring you and this is what we should uh, uh, So this is all about free access. 
Then, library, library catalog. Um, uh, for us, it's, it's important because library catalog, there is a book I will just show you. Um, the author is Markus Krajewski. The book is called Paper Machines. So I would just like to point you to that story. So the, when you have like a lot of books, you need like a list of these books in order to kind of, you need a librarian also. But also, if you, if you don't have a librarian, you, you want to have like a list, no? So during, from like sometimes like 14th, 15th century, people started, people had mostly like a religious, you know, okay, doesn't matter. So, so, so they just had like enough, like thousands. We are not talking about millions at the time, but they already had a need to go with the, with the list, no? And then they started to think about what, what could be the good list, how do you actually make it. So you can make it in a script, you can make it into pages, and then you can bind it and you have a book, which actually is a list of all of your books, right? But then what if new books come? How do you actually add it to that book? Now you have to like, whatever, get rid of the binding and things like that. So then some smart people uh, came up with the idea of index card catalog. So in an index card catalog, you would have like all kind of possible things, like you can relate, you can like point to another index card and, 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 and things like that. So for some, like maybe a hundred or a few hundred years, the problem was technical actually, that index card catalog was very hard to get because there were no manufacturer who could make it consistently in the same size and thickness. No? So that, that was a technical problem, which today is not like something which, uh, because paper is not that uh, easy to, 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 uh, to make. So Markus Krajewski is trying to say that the computers didn't just appear because we needed air defense and then uh, like a horrible Nazis, uh, like made some secrets and then we had Alan Turing and the others trying to decipher what they were doing. You know, like that's the usual story. So during the World War II, uh, some smart people came up with the idea of computers, no? And then they forget about some things which happened in Britain, some things which happened in Germany. It all happened in the US. So what I like about this story with Markus Krajewski is that he put it into the, the kind of the, the a line, a lineage of production of knowledge where librarianship is equally important for the development of computers. So then everything you can imagine with what we can do with computers, my father is pretty much like everything, <laughs> uh, is in that sense also thanks to a librarian. So, so for us, library catalog is that, is like a very potent abstract machine, uh, just like computer, but we call it library catalog because if you say computer, no one would understand. No? Like it would be like a messy kind of uh, abstraction here. And then, uh, the last, the, the last one is a librarian. So this free access and library catalog is possible if you get the monopoly, for example, if Amazon really get there. Apple is out of game. For a few years, I had Apple and Amazon. But uh, Apple is not anymore any kind of uh, uh, player in the world uh, on the book market. You know? um, so it seems that it could be that that will be Amazon. You know? So if Amazon will be the only player ever, no? for the books, then for most of the people will feel that it's free if they paid it somewhere else. No? So if Amazon just make a deal through talk, you know, it's kind of, if they are monopolies, they can do uh, all kind of negotiations, no? So in that sense, they have already cut a lot, and it's very powerful, you know, like people who bought this book also bought that book, you know, so they are very much in charge to actually uh, move it in the direction they want and all these things. So if we end up with that, then it's very possible that people will feel that it's free access because you get there without like paying for every book. And there is a catalog. And that's not what we see as a public library. We don't think that a public library should be uh, in, owned by any private corporation, especially not Amazon, no? No, like any, but also especially not, because Amazon is really bad, no? So it's like some companies at the beginning of their life, they don't seem that bad. And actually, they are not that bad. They're just naive. So they think that they can change the world as entrepreneur, no? 
and we prove that I, I'm very skeptical. I, I don't. I, I don't believe them. They're my political enemies. But what I'm trying to say: not all companies are equally bad at different phases. Amazon is the worst and is the best candidate to do what I'm trying to say at this moment. And then a librarian is very important. So what we try to do with the librarian is a is a person, is a is a is a human being is the knowledge production which, which goes behind that. It's a labor. It's all of the possible relations of labor and capital. But at the same time, it's also subjectivities. So that means that uh, if you don't, if I, I'm blind for so many things sy sy systemically, no? It's, I, I want to learn more, but that doesn't help that much. And for many issues, for many experiences in the world, I just will not, I will not be the librarian for everything. I'm a librarian for what I'm talking to you now. now this is, if you, if you follow me on this as a librarian, I think that you will get more of what I just said. But if you want to see something else, then you should go for some other librarian. And in our vision of the library, that's how we, how we go. So these librarians not necessarily being here, we don't see memory of the world as something where all librarians ever should come, no? It's free software you can run uh, on your own, so you can just like pick up this software and like make your own community. So I'll just like finish, um, yeah, I will finish in like in a few minutes, and I'll show you what are the when you are librarian. So I think that what I try to, to make here is a case of how we can challenge the idea of property, how we can change the idea of ownership. Uh, so I, I'll just first I'll just few things. I would say that intellectual property, the way how we make the production, intellectual production, knowledge production, into a product to get into that neoliberal information processing machine um, is, is, is absolutely inappropriate. Um, I will tell you also like schizophrenic situation which happened to me. So MIT Press um, wanted us to write about this project. So it's very, like MIT Press is in academia, maybe you know, maybe you don't, doesn't matter, they're very prestige uh, 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 publisher. So through some editors for anthology of uh, tactical media, we got a contract from MIT Press to write for that anthology. And in that contract, as, as it is today, we get no money as authors, no. no access. There is nothing to say that we actually, in any way, have. We are in charge of um, of our work, but they are prestige, so we should be happy. No? And we were happy, no? <laughs> yeah, fine. No? We will write it because also we will pilot it. No, like you know how we can do that, but yeah, some others maybe not. So, so, um, so another thing happened is that two weeks later. We got like several takedown notices, and takedown notice is the first step before you get into court case. So MIT Press was set, uh, uh, sending us letters by their lawyers saying you should um, uh, you should like withdraw these books. And they actually went for Art Power by Boris Groys, only one book. Um, um, let me see. I just. Yeah, we have like 2,721 book by MIT Press. So they only sent one. And it doesn't matter how many books. Uh, there is another project I'm involved with in Canada. We are sued for half a million dollars for one book by a small publisher. No? So that's how the whole thing starts. No? These are the things which happen today with, with these things. And they sent the first letter. And then um, uh, I was talking I got a keynote. I'm, tr I'm trying to tell you that this story is, in that sense, recognized as relevant in all kind of institutions, which are also prestige. So I was at, um, um, at uh, Brown University with a keynote, no? 
talking about project and then also mentioning how we got a contract and then take the notice, which is kind of crazy. You know? Like the same entity is like trying to do like all kinds of things with you. And they are schizophrenic and we understand why is that happening. Uh, and they are like, they are, because of that schizophrenia, they really went like super bad. You heard the last thing MIT Media Lab, the Upstein, the money, you know, like MIT is like in big problems. And no surprise, because there are like many reasons why you should end up there, because you live in a very um, uh, like a schizophrenic world and you are trying to comply to, to, to all of that. So I was talking at the Brown University, mentioning that people were laughing, you were laughing a little bit less than them, but I just didn't deliver the joke in a good way. And then that uh, uh, conference had the publication following up. You know? I got, again, take down notice from MIT Press, and then I heard that MIT Press will actually either publish or distribute the publication coming the, from that conference where I'm like talking about Anigo. So I was like, kind of, how many times we'll play this game? You know? Like, how many times MIT Press will be keen to publish our story and at the same time threaten us with, uh, with, these, like, uh, 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 with these letters. No? So that's kind of like a schizophrenia around the ownership. And now I, I'll just tell you, yeah, I'll just tell you like a few minutes what are other things which you can do. This is the intervention, primary intervention we are doing, enjoying what we are doing. No? Enjoying with all others who are enjoying what we are doing because there is a lot of downloads from this website. And a couple of people realize that they can ask me for the books, you can ask me for the books, and I'll probably bring it to uh, our network. No? So the other things, and that's about the knowledge, which is suppressed because of some other reasons, not just the ownership, but ownership and, and uh, property is usually a part of that. So for example, in Croatia during the 90s, uh, public libraries uh, would get rid of the 10 times more books than sometimes 100 times more books than what they are supposed to get rid of. Because every year you kind of, uh, you write off the books which are just too old, you can't actually borrow them, you know, like they're kind of, oh, for some other reasons, I don't know, like new version of the software, you don't, I, I don't know, like there are like many reasons why, because of the scarcity of the bookshelf, you want to get rid of some of the books. But during the 90s, public libraries in Croatia were getting rid of anything having anything to do with Serbian uh, uh, language, uh, Serbian authors, uh, Cyrillic, Serbian publishers, so anything Serbian. At the same time, anything workers related, yeah. anything like ideology, in that sense, socialism, communism, whatever. And not, not, not less horrible, but still super horrible, especially for today, also Antifa. So anything which had to do with the sect, because they were very much volunteers complying with the state ambient, if not like a, a proper instructions, to ideologically cleanse, to do the proper reboot, the proper historical and other revision of the world. So they were very, very kind of like keen, keen to do that. And uh, um, a comrade Leshaya, did a very good book, a research, with all of the titles. Uh, and that's like uh, 1,500 pages research of what happened at the time. So what we did is that we invited people, because we, we scanned the books also, there are around like 2,000 books out of 150,000 books which are scanned. And they are mostly through the project I'm, 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 I'm telling you about. So we invited people to actually come with these books and then we would scan it and, and, and bring it back. I'll just show you the... Um, uh, the front page. <clears throat> and people from Yugoslavia will probably recognize some of these. Oro Viramo This is like a I come up like that. The, the key partisan getting with people. It's kind of like, so that didn't work well, even with the extreme right, you know, because it's kind of like, it's like Fahrenheit, you know, it's, people don't like to burn the books. They want them to get, it's, but they still know that, that that's not like what's happening. So my point here is that today, 
doing a librarianship, uh, it probably it will intervene the most in the in the in the realm of the intellectual property regime or private property regime if you try to push it in other areas and say it's the same in housing, the medicine, the, the ownership of medicine, genes and all of that, it's horrible. So it, it seems that privatization <coughs> and the property regime doesn't really work almost anywhere. But it seems also that the most blatant example is online, no? like for us. So that's, that's why we start with that. But then there is a lot which can be done by tactical use of what do you offer, what, how do you do it. You can scan. You don't need to scan everything ever of your nation state, no? because that's usually what public libraries do today. They kind of think that they are nation state something. No? But if you do something politically relevant, if you pick up the good issue, that could be a great tool to intervene uh, and to join uh, to join the struggles which are already happening. Uh, yeah, I will just stand here so we have like a couple of minutes for discussion. Yes, we can, we can take some time if you don't, you're not in the rush for the, the match, so <laughs> <laughs> feel free to <so. laughs> Just pass it around. Okay, good. So we can have more questions. Like to, please go ahead. Like in a library. No. Mm. I just wanted to ask you like, how you deal with the court cases, as in how you, manage, how you deal with the, the court cases. Court cases. Court cases. And like, how are you managing to like financially fight them? Um, not. My mom is not happy how I deal with that. Because <laughs> um, so there is only one court case. Um, uh, it's already like thirty thousand dollars in uh, kind of in I don't know paid for the for the uh, for that. It was done, half of that was done um, uh, through like a crowdfunding campaign at the beginning. Uh, then the rest was paid by a founder. So I'm kind of like almost kind of collateral damage in that court case because I joined for solidarity uh, and, and wanted to be there because I was involved. And then the only person which was kind of like addressed was uh, Sean Dockery who founded Park, and uh, and I wanted to, in that sense, I, I also kind of invite other people to collectivize that because that project is truly collective. Uh, Sean only um, um, like founded that, but then that process didn't go because we are lazy and uh, unlike uh, John, <laughs> we don't believe in hard work. <laughs> any, any of that. So we were too slow. Uh, even we had enough signals that that thing will happen. No? So we ended up only two of us. So I'm there because I'm the owner of a domain, and in a court case, kind of labeled like a, a hacker from a Balkan, and then I'm doing something, some bad things. But we, the court case, still didn't get to my role. So it's still, it's more than like three or four years, and it takes for a very long time. It's super annoying, um, and that's how we deal with that. We just deal with that. I mean, we don't have a. Uh, yeah, we don't have like in that particular case we don't have a strategy for our for member of the world. It was completely different from the very beginning. It in that sense is not um, how to say that. It's it's very clearly saying what's going on. So our defense in member of the world, if we ever get co uh, 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 sued. We'll never go and say like, oh, we didn't know, no, we know what we are doing. We do that because we believe that this system is just like uh, the, the system in whole. I mean, everything what I was preaching <coughs> last 45 minutes now. So that's part of our defense. Part of our defense is also to involve all of the, uh, all of the institutions, um, all of the institutions which were, uh, which were like, which recognized this is like where we had whatever a 
appearances, exhibitions, whatever, uh, education. So what we would like to do is like to make a court case into kind of performative whatever. Uh, any lawyer would tell you that doesn't make any sense. So in that sense, that's not a legal strategy. This is the strategy of what do we want to do in this, in, in, with this intervention. So it's also like, we, we like to talk a lot about civil disobedience. So we think that there are like a number of things uh, people do, number of activities people do. Um, and uh, we have another project called Pirate Care, for example, where, which will happen in like few weeks in, in Rijeka and then next year, which says that there are like more and more activities which are happening in the world, which are obviously like should happen, Rescue of refugees, helping refugees on, on, the, on, the, on their path is something which humans should do for other humans. There is no doubt about it. Whoever had any, in that sense, any doubts on that part, uh, I think that they are like my political enemies. And let's see what is the battle. You know? like if there is a war, they, we then go with the weapons. If there is no war, then we do all, all kind of political struggles and battles. You know? But that's what we wouldn't uh, question. Then in reproductive rights, still, like abortion is again like an issue, you know? Like it's just like it, it's, it's, it's kind of like ridiculous, you know? Like there are so many issues which we should kind of leave behind us and that's becoming more and more. So even in that field, there are a lot of, uh, uh, um, there, there is a lot of practices which are becoming illegal or criminalized. Then in the access to healthcare, again, uh, and th these are also like very much connected, you know, like refugee, the people without the papers, things like that. So the activities which we all know that should happen, and like if you cannot join, you're kind of like, I'm sorry that I'm not doing that. That's obviously better than what I do, but uh, I, I at least I like totally support that, you know. And then we see that that what we do in digital, and that's not the only thing which is in that sense like illegal, criminalized, but like kind of like. Uh, having that vision. So in that sense, we are trying to make all of that into the big case. And what is sure is that we will lose any legal case. But we don't know what could be the consequences. Uh, most of the time, if that will change, is that people who are kind of get in trouble, usually get in trouble in US, Canada, whatever, and then you don't go there for a while. <laughs> or then you move somewhere where, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so that's, yeah. I have a couple of uh, reflections and questions, so it's not a third, but it's like, um, it, it just, you are based on Croatia, right? Uh, I'm now employed by the Coventry University in the UK, so I'm like a British academic, but I'm based on yeah, my primary. So, it's just like, access to book is really great, I mean, it's like very exciting to have, to know that all these are available, but I have a couple of questions. Um, of, for example, language. These are books uh, for a certain society because you use society members. And I, I feel like this is very kind of problematic, problematic but subject of, of reflection or material of reflection with society and who would be interested in these books and how we can make these books actually available, really access and with knowledge because now we are not only talking about the books as books, but also the knowledge in these books available. Uh, so I'm reflecting on the word, I, I want to reflect with you on, on the word of society um, and language, but who, who can access this really, who would be um, interested in this and even to explore and how to make it more expensive in a way. Uh, so I'm also reflecting on translation movement maybe, or I, I just like, I'm putting all this because, on the table because if I see it now, it would be mainly for academia or a very small um, group of people who speak English, mostly, uh, who has a certain interest or jargon while, yeah, you know, on, the, on this level, but doesn't make really this, this knowledge are available. It, it makes it available for certain people who already in, into into, into. Yeah. So it's not a criticize, it's like uh, No, please criticize. I'm, I'm also. No, no, but uh, it's not a criticize because it's already 
huge step. So it's, it's not like I said, ah, oh, you didn't do this, uh, but I just like reflect yeah. how to... I think that, 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 that kind of like, I'm, I'm kind of, um, how to say that, I'm happy that you see that this can actually address even that scope, no? Where I think that our pro and that's because it's on internet, no? So in that sense, like anything on internet, for many people, kind of feels like it can go wider than it is at the moment, no? But for us, it is, uh, what we could do, this is a network. Uh, uh, it's not in that sense universal, it doesn't claim universal as in scope of the substance, it uses tactically the ideas of the universality uh, and especially like a legacy of the French Revolution, things like that. We try our best to kind of not to subscribe that in like whatever the colonial, imperial and, and all of that, but kind of use it like tactically because we see that there is certain potential. Then another kind of part of that is that it's also about allocation of resources. So uh, we feel that, like, like I did, I don't know, I don't want to say percentage, but I did majority of the software platform with the with with help of my friend. So this is done by two people. Uh, so this is how much it could be done with two people programming and like uh, six up to 20 people doing like the collections. Yeah, so that, that's how far and also it's like, um, seven years of the work no? of hard work, <laughs> uh, and then, 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 then uh, uh, also what we what we are trying to do uh, when there is a chance. So in that sense, we try to say this is not our scope, but not because we don't see it. It's just that we didn't have an opportunity and chance. I don't. I was in Germany five years. I I don't know numbers in Germany. I'm lazy, I don't want to learn German. It's just, it happened, no? So, for example, Libros, memoryoftheworld.org is like 26,000 books, and I always say it's a surprise that the Spanish books are not that much available on the internet, like other languages. And I always say, is there a librarian here who speaks Spanish? Please, please, like, take, I, I will give you the whole. We don't have a librarian speaking Spanish to take care of that. And then maybe you can take care of everything, but what we would like to do is to work with someone who will go to these 26,000 and pick up maybe some, maybe not. Some of the librarians don't like this because it's full of like Pulp Fiction, love novels and things like that. And then we were making jokes like, hey, we, work, we want to have people, we want to have working class here. And then the working class come and then you're like, hey, I don't like their taste, no? Yeah. So there's a lot of jokes, there, but still we don't have a librarian. So what we would like to see is that someone take care of that. Uh, Maybe collaboration work because I know, for example, I'm not to read uh, to treat her myself, but I know that some initiatives like this are done in, in Arabic. I mean, where you can find a large collection, but more, more, mostly, yeah, I've hacked or I mean, it's, 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 it is there. For example, but maybe just like we like have a number of failed attempts. Uh, yeah. we, we made like 11 book scanners. The only book scanners we did, which did more than 100 books, was one in Mama, and that one uh, scanned, or like people scanned on that book scanner, uh, more than like maybe around 2,000 books. Like 10 others are kind of situated in different kind of spaces, from anarchist colony in Barcel uh, nearby Barcelona to uh, Ramallah in Palestine to, I don't know, like some art academy in Germany, uh, archive in London, and it doesn't happen. You know? So we kind of like, we feel that we are doing as much as we could. We are lazy, so it's not like we don't believe in hard work. So probably more could be done. I don't want to do more, you know, in, in, as in hard work. So it's hard also, that's the thing. You know? like, so, yeah. Um, I'm just curious to know your political position uh, regarding public libraries. Mm -hmm. So I like Amazon is clear, Amazon and this whole universe is your political <coughs> kind of public libraries? No, no. Oh, Amazon. 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 Jeff Bezos. Did I? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And then public libraries, physical public libraries who are owned by the state and give an example and this law of 100 million 
So we over identify with public library. We over identify with the mission and the vision of what we think public libraries should be. Yeah. So we think that public libraries shouldn't, so that there is always like a kind of um, a problem where the public usually is the scope of nation state. No? Mm -hmm. So it seems that that's how people tend to see public, no? like public access to park, to transport, to transportation, and then someone who has no ID card cannot. And then you're like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, then I don't like, you know, in that sense. So there is a trap in which public libraries could be over identified with that limits, I would say, with traps, and many would do. So that's where they don't see that their kind of, um, their kind of reason to be was not with the vision and idea of all people are equal, but. You know? So in that sense, the, the, the public library, these institutions who get into that trap, we would probably say, hey, there is a trap there. But at the same time, institutions, we also write, I, I didn't, there is another kind of angle here, which is then the relation to institutions, what, like, in which way the institutions could be part of political struggles, things like that. Uh, so I would say that few of us try to articulate that the institution has a very important role and then that there are ways how we can deal with the institutions and that's not joining the institution and then trying to do something from inside but there is also a possibility to challenge the institution without saying and then that's not avant-garde gesture from like, um, I don't know, like from Russian constructivism, we were just like burn all of the museums and put them into a poteca, you know, as a, as a little kind of... That's what we are trying to say is like, there is a reason why you are here. We are with you. We believe that that's what we should do as part of our, our, our political struggle. We should establish our institutions radically uh, in relation to the vision of a society, uh, in a relation to political articulation, so that you, as a, someone, from institution, you should be allowed, uh, you shouldn't, in my opinion, you shouldn't hard work, but politically you should be aware. And that's where the, so it's more like a discussion. At the yeah. same time, we don't invite public libraries because we don't want them to get into risk because any public library who would join us at this moment would get probably in more trouble than, than any other institution. Yeah. So in that sense, when we work with people, we work secretly. And then we are trying to prepare some public libraries who will join and then maybe join the, the way so that it's prepared. So there is, it's kind of tactical, you know? But we don't see in any way as enemy. We don't see us as replacing anyone there. This is just the kind of intervention in that sense. Librarianship is, a, is a, such a great uh, field of knowledge. And we, amateur librarians, we know little compared to the librarianship. But what we do is that we do the political intervention in order for that knowledge to be more relevant in our society. Friends, some people get in fights, 
uh, there are like some emotional connections, then these emotional connections maybe. So in that sense, it's just like any other collective or organization. There is also a, a lot of kind of discrepancies because few people, me primarily, have like a role which is like I'm better programmer than most of the librarians who are there. And then I'm the one who's making the code chain. You know, so I, I'm, in that sense, I'm much more in charge for this kind of decision than anyone else. And I don't do like a assembly for all of the decisions which comes to the to, to the technical. We just I don't. And, and that's and I, I don't feel like we should like address that. There is free software. Anyone can run. I'm happy to help someone starting something else. Uh, and then there, like I just mentioned, that anecdote in Spanish, like that librarian who did absolutely the most for memory of the world. We always, but it's, I, I'm not sure if I should share it with you because this is from our person. This is kind of like how you make yourself funny, no? So he would probably make jokes out of it because he's teasing me, so he's playing that guy and then I'm playing another guy. You know, like that's how we have friendships, no? So in public he would probably say something else. But he was saying like, I don't want Libros, no? What is now like not, uh, 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 this is not added still to the world. And then I was using that like joke like, ah, you're leftist, but you can't deal with that, what working class want to read. Right? And then he says like, oh, come on, like, shut the fuck up. You know, it's, and then that's how we uh, go further. Uh, when it comes to what, what, what you brought, it's, uh, we are very aware of, of, of that. In, in that, in the uh, realm of uh, identity politics, um, yeah, it's um, gender balance, fine, <laughs> racial, Horrible. You know, like okay. things like that. And, uh, huh? Who cares? Okay. No, it's not that who cares. I, I, I would never say who cares. I think that we care. And then it's the proof do you care or not is not always, but most of the time is to see what's going on there. So, in that sense, I think that probably the best representation is what we have there. But at the same time, vast majority would be also books which are not, like, not that political. So the tag would be better kind of entry point, like political tag, than just going one by one. But at the same time, uh, I don't think that we have many books where we would be like, oh, this book shouldn't be there. We can say, oh, that, that guy is an asshole, you know? <laughs> but still, that book is OK. Like, it's not like. We don't, but at the same time, it's internet, it's like passwords all, all over, and we are guerrilla, no? So we don't claim to replace any public institution, we don't make that as our mission. We will not, we will never get to that universality or like that kind of mission, which some other institutions should do. Uh, but at the same time, I think that there is a kind of layer of governance, what do you do, and also what do you say. So we try to do what we can, not what we would like to see in the world, because most of the things which we would like to see in the world, we are absolutely, first, not competent to do, and then second, not, not have resources like anything. So that's, that's, yeah. This is not model for governance, but if you want to like a guerrilla, yeah, then we can join and you do more. One last question, maybe you already... We are over time, yeah, so... Yeah. Uh, do, do you select the librarians? Do you approach certain people? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I can tell you just a little bit how, how it started. So at the beginning, it was like people would use Calibre, uh, which is that software. Um, uh, which is the software which everyone should use. And I don't have the plugin even installed. Uh, I, I will just like explain you now. It's um, I'm sorry I don't have it prepared just to show it now. So there is that. It, just imagine imagine Excel, which is very good for books now. So every librarian should use that calendar. And then there was a there was a, a click which you can do, and then it says start sharing. And then the librarians at the beginning would share from their own computer, and then people could see it through the server. 
So if I like then lead the my if I get out from the internet, these books are not anymore available. So for many people, they was like, wow, that's great, it's peer-to-peer, -peer. it has like a working hours, like a library, you have to get with librarians in touch, you know, that the kind of that had artistic aspect, high, but usability aspect, very low, because very, very soon, people started to come to me like, where's the book, I found it last time, why is it not there, I need it now, like what the fuck is going on? So we slightly moved to the management of the library, which goes that all librarians, when they add their books locally, they upload it to the server. And then it's 24 seven available, and then there are ways how you can get in touch with librarians, and that's, that's how it goes there. But the librarians usually comes through other librarians, so we don't make open calls. We did only one open call for Spanish library after we tried many personal, and we never got someone to take care of that. So I'm doing that again. <laughs> um, is it, it's now open source, we can just go to this website and uh, read, or no, read. You can download this, yeah. even if it's not open source. The software, which is behind this website, not open is open source. Oh, okay. But even if it is not, it, yeah. this website is online, library.memory.org. Yeah. You can download what? all of these books, yeah. Mm -hmm. It will take a lot of time, mm -hmm. but yeah. It's, uh, also, if you are interested in like running it somewhere, there are a lot of like projects we did so that I would allow people to do bulk download. There is also a way how you can do bulk download uh, on your own, so you can like I don't know, download thousand books in like a day, and you just do like one command line in the terminal, and it's downloading everything by the tag everything by that author, everything by that librarian. So you can, in that sense, that's the way how you can uh, yeah, take the books and run. Just a playful proposal. What about um, building such a thing on, for example, Fearless torrent technology and giving it to the people in front of in the shape of a downloadable application, a mobile application, uh, so you don't have to, to trouble yourself with the server and, uh, and all. It's just a ready made fearless thing that cannot be ever called or, or it's hard to hard to And uh, specializing not on this kind of uh, hardcore five syllable uh, literature, but on really hard fiction stuff the novels that you wanted. And this is how you would uh, access other layers of society who don't read these kind of things. <laughs> Just ask you. Uh, there is two questions here. One is about the technical part, and another one is about pop fiction. And like the exactly. mission to reach more people. So I will start with the later one. Reaching more people, I don't do that. If you are a librarian who want to read pop fiction, you are very welcome. I like you, so I will kind of, yeah, I will talk to other people and I think that because I like you, that's usually the good way how you can get in. If someone would just come out of blue saying I want to share pulp fiction, I think that you will start, like you will say, like, not now, let's see <coughs> why, how, what's the context, no? We are not sure that pulp fiction just on its own is necessarily immediately there, no? So I would, I, I, that's my guess. The technical part, which is about the peer-to-peer, -peer, I'm, I'm fairly good programmer. I can sell my skills on my tech. Uh, I tried quite a few things, and I think that there is no technology which is ready for the books now. I think that BitTorrent was very good for movies, and then Germany killed it because of the famous 800 euros letters you would get if you torrent, if you come from Balkan and Berlin and then torrent some movies, and then your friend you yeah, got three in the yeah, yeah. There is probably one person here. I got at least five who came to me and said, so BitTorrent are killed by that in many ways because they are like these letters. Also, technically, it was made for files in between 600 megabytes up to like two gigabytes. Anything smaller and bigger is not really the best for BitTorrent. There, there is things or reasons I tried that. There are a couple of others, IPFS, uh, there's that, they're like, I, 
I, I tried all of them, I'm still trying, and, uh, and we will eventually get there technically, uh, probably because we are lazy, a little bit too late. Uh, but in this particular case, I can get into any technical discussion. I have my arguments and I'm like arrogant. I know that it's not ready and I think that will be actually earlier there. That was just a joke. No? I, I, we would like to do that, but the problem with peer-to-peer -peer is that it pleases the hearts and brains of technologists and no one, el no one else cares. It's very hard to get people to help you distribute the resources. They just don't care. The biggest ever, which was the success, was Skype. And you probably didn't even know that when you were using Skype from 2003 to 2000, when Microsoft bought it, you were part of the, uh, sharing the resources with, with all other Skype users. Like almost nothing else in technology. If you know of any, I'm happy to know. I will help my academic career in a way, but I don't know of any other uh, 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 example. And it's very hard. If you know how to address that, I'm happy to follow. It's very, very, very hard. It's very hard these days to, uh, to, to convince people to install anything. It's, it's just that's the, that's the problem. People care, but they care in a different way. They don't care about what you need them to do. They care about things, and then they do what they think they should do. And yeah. Thank you, Marcel. Thank you. Thank you.